G'day and welcome back to Torment Tides of Ranmanera. Uh, today we're gonna chase up on Alagon. I mean, I haven't really been using him too much. I really should chat with the companions I'm not using much. But, uh, we haven't done his quest. And, or well, rather, he, when we grabbed him, he specifically mentioned he wanted to go to his village's totem here. So, let's chat with him and find out where that is. What do you know about the valley anyway? Burial pl place for countless civilizations. Not the valley itself, but below it. May Aldea's memory is here. Used to be a peaceful, serene place where people could come and think for a spell. Never been to the necropolis. Never had any urge to see it. None of my dead left any remains anyway. Okay, and what's your story? Not exactly my favorite topic. Fine, ask. Um, you said you were an Aeon priest. What's the story of that? Worked for him for years, but when I came when I came to ask him for help, they refused me. They gave me no time, no resources, no aid. Said I had to give up my researches. Said I was obsessed, they said. Heartless bastards, how could I not be? The order of truth and I don't get on. They think I'm cocked, I think they're frauds. We exchange little these little pleasantries every time we meet. Only got one friend left and I can't even contact him most of the time. Um why do they think you're cocked? Because I speak my mind to them? Can you tell me about your history? Not from around here. I was a local Aeon priest for a small aldea. Ormond it was called. Far west of here. Things happened. I left. Here I am. Nowhere to go back to. You said things happened. What do you mean? Not ready to talk about it yet. Can you tell me about your tats? They look almost alive. These? They're nothing. I call them a consolation if you want. Some call them by worse names, but that's because they've had occasion to run afoul of these little snakes. My gift and my curse. Think they remind me of it every day. Okay. Did you and Calistige, you know, sleep together? I suppose if you can go clawing and scratching at each other a relationship, then sure. It was pleasant at the beginning. I needed solace. She needed validation, perhaps. But when I failed her, she grew bitter and cutting. Never heard of the end of it. She used her words like a whip, and she cut me down to the bone. And who's your friend at the Order of Truth? Orthfong does his little research for me time to time. Personal work. I had other questions. How are you holding up? As well as can be expected. What do you reckon about Rin? Don't know if we should be looking after a child. We're going through some dark places. Can we just bring a torch or whatever it is people use here for light? I mean, if we're going through... Oh, that's not what you meant. No, it's not. What about Tiber? A liar and a know-nothing. At least he doesn't expect you to hold up your side of a conversation. Very true. I can entertain myself and others for count... Uh, entertain myself and countless others for hours. Okay, let's do it. Of course. Alright, let's go down. I think he might be talking about this Fine. pillar down here. And I think we already missed our opportunity for Calistage's personal growth here. Um, let's see, if we revisit the memories with Alagon here... No, no, no. Okay, Alagon, what about this? Yes. Or that? Mm, that's not an interactable. This is interactable, though. I missed that. Ah, okay. The helix continues its revolution. The light swaying hypnotically. It's soothing in a way. A peace and invites some meditation. This was a traditional memorial place for a village. The carvings, I mean, the contraption, I built it. He laughs a little, a whisper of humor. I don't even know if all these people are dead, but I built it for him anyway. What happened to them? An accident. A terrible accident. What kind of accident? Someone found a device, a frame, or a weapon. Someone activated it, and then my people were gone. Someone. I've been looking for my people ever since, following the trails I could find, trying to find any clues I could about the frame, who made it, what it's for. But I couldn't dig up anything. Couldn't find the traveler who caused the device to be activated. 
Problem is, that traveler is hard to find. Slippery. People know about her, but they don't know where to find her. Perhaps we'll have more luck in the Yellow Vest. Perhaps then I'll get some answers. They must know about the a lot about the Changing God. I appreciate your help getting there. Go. Anything else? Nope. Alright, what's this? Bubbles rise from the pool before you, and its barren edges are crusted up with white rime. The acrid reek of the water makes your eyes tear up. The rime and reek around the pool suggest the water has a dangerously high alkaline content. It would be dangerous to drink or even touch. Despite the bubbles and deep color, the water is crystal clear and you can see down into the depths of the pool. There's a brassy metallic globe down there, caked with rime but otherwise whole. Unfortunately, it is too deep to reach without diving in. Um, well, let's try and grab it anyway. Wow, we got no chance. Rin's got a pretty good chance. And Tiber has a pretty good chance. What's that for? Oh, his mantle boosts him, and he's got quick fingers, and he gets one free level of effort. Whereas Rin is in it. Ah, she's got an inability, which cancels out that. So that's why Tiber's slightly better for this. Yeah, Tiber, give it a go. I mean, I'm about to dump you back into wherever you came from, so go for it. You dive into the water and your eyes instantly start burning. Your body's aflame, but you kick down, determined, and scrabble for the globe. As soon as it's safe in your hands, you kick for the surface. You're screaming in pain as you climb from the pool. After agonizing minutes, you're able to pull yourself together enough to examine the globe. When you do, you discover it holds a treasure trove. So we've got a wrap and a slipknot. So the wrap is a bonded artifact. Interesting. This wrap is made of an airy fabric that's dull in hue but shimmers effervescently with a slight silvery light. Upon closer examination, it is extraordinarily soft and slightly cold to the touch, imbuing its wearer with an enhanced intellect. Some old stories claim that the same coldness seeps into the wearer's personality, taking part of their warmth and, and humanity. Yep, cool. And the slipknot. Interesting. Um... At first glance, this appears to be a crude arm bracelet woven into the shape of a hangman's noose, the kind of item a macabre child might make. Closer examination of any of the three cords used in the weave twists the perception of the wearer, making that a cord appear to grow thicker while the other, one of the other two thins and... Oh, sorry. Yeah, thins and fades from sight. By breaking them up, it's possible to absorb the object's powers. So... It just boosts your highest pool... That's pretty neat. Okay. And then leave it. Don't drink it. Alright. Sounds good. I don't know how we got damaged when we... Technically speaking, Tiber should be the one doing all that. But whatever. Alright. So I think that's everything we can do here. Um, we can try chatting to Elegon and see if we can get any further with him I now. I appreciate the chance to stop by Ormond's monument been too long since I visited. I'm sorry about what happened to your family, Elegon. Shock registers momentarily on his place. Replace quickly with a short smile. Appreciate it. Come on, we've got to get to Miela Vest. Sometimes she's really not like her sire at all. Uh, how are you holding up? As well as can be expected, want to talk about you again. Not my favorite topic. Can you tell me about your history again? You saw the monument to Ullman, the aldea where I was an Aeon priest. It used to be a place where my people went to memorialize the dead. Never used necropolis, just sketched the memories under the wall. I had to remember them all. Someone activated some old Numenera, wiped out my village, or disappeared them at least. I've been looking for whatever happened to them, and on the trail of the person responsible. Okay, that's all I wanted. Righto. Well, I think we'll go to Miela Vest with him. Um, no point in taking Eritus there at the moment. Ready. And then, I mean, we could also chat with Tiber, but... I mean, I do actually need to kick Elegon out of the party briefly, though. Let's so go. I can upgrade him. I said good... what? 
Why am I not moving? Okay, that's super weird. I'm going. Good. You better go. Can't say I mind that. And now we pop through. Well, let's just double check something. If we can grab anything from in here. Look inside the ebony box again. We can't take it. Right. Well, that's a pity. Unless... None of them are doctors, are they? I'm going. Let's just double check that. I realize this takes a little bit more time than I'd like. I don't know why the... The music just changed, that was a bit weird. But whatever. Uh, I need to go through this rift. Yes. Yep. You, you're wearing white, you might be able to help us. Um... What's your name? What are you doing here? We've already done all of this. Nope. Luca. Can you tell me anything else about yourself? No. And Thalana? Let's right. try moving such that we're not trying to walk through someone to get to them. Back again. Are you a doctor? No. Never mind. Alright, let's get out of here. Let's skedaddle. So we'll kick out Tiber and grab Matkina. And we'll kick out... who else? Uh, whoops, I want to go to the red one. We'll kick out Tiber and we'll kick out Alagon to get Callistage, upgrade Callistage, kick out Callistage, and get Alagon again, and then wander through Miela Vest. Sounds like fun to me. I'm ready. Okay, nearly there. Let's go all. You and me. Wait. No, are any of you technically doctors? <sighs> this is slightly annoying to do, but I'm like, I don't remember Jenks, I don't think I would trust as a doctor anyway. Talira. Oh, we can ask her about Choi, and that's where we get... Ah. Okay, and you don't have any healing skills. Nope. Cool, cool. And, ah, I guess we'll talk to Nav. Nav. Are you also some kind of doctor man? Yeah, yeah, no. Okay. On it. That's all good. Location we already know. First cast off's tomb. Off we go. Yes. Okay. I mean, I had actually expected that once we got to Miela Vest, we wouldn't be allowed to leave. But, yeah. It's kind of nice to just expand that area. Alright. So. Allegan. Firstly, Tiber, go away. Never had much use for family myself. They're one of the reasons I took to the military life as quick as I could. Some of my family didn't have much use for me. No use, I care to remember at least. I'm sorry to hear that. Nothing to be sorry about. I didn't go into any of the grotesque details, but they happened and I made moves to leave them in my past, where they belong. This place is all earmarks of a fight waiting to break out over dinner. So maybe we can pinch some of the silverware before that happens, so to speak. If an opportunity presents itself, why not? Good lass, I'll keep an eye out. What's your opinion on this place? 
cold, isn't it? Temperature in the reception. You'd think people in this in a place this hard to reach would be friendlier. How you holding up? I'm fine, lass. I just hope you won't regret our friendship when time comes to part ways. And anything else? So, you're a captain? Retired. I've been on my own, more or less, for a handful of decades now. Still, having a captaincy under your belt opens doors, lifts dresses, drops trousers, so I tend to wave it around wherever I can. And what's your story? Oh, the usual. Farm boy joins one war or another. He doesn't die, but gets a sound spanking by the world till he learns to spank it back. I want to hear more about your background. And I don't blame you, but I'll warn you, I've never had a handle on what people consider too much information. Never looked for one either. Go and ask your questions, I've got answers for everyone. Tell me about your life as a soldier. Well, I wasn't the best or the worst. But I started at the bottom, fell out the side, and ended up a gallow glass on my own. It's not an easy life being a mercenary, but you try to fight for causes you believe in, and avoid striking blows that aren't deserved. And you try not to fail at both while the realities of life batter you into new shapes, change you. Some of the best days of my life, those, despite tears. You said that the realities of life changed you. How? Not one for light questions, are you? He rubs his hands together. My father raised me to be honest. Well, honesty works on a farm. Animals don't lie to you much as a rule. But as a soldier? Put it like this. First night in the camp, I was mugged by my sergeant and left for dead. All because I thought an honest face meant an honest heart. It's the honest one you, you have to watch out for. So I've adapted my approach over the years. I reward kindness with kindness, cruelty with justice, and foolishness with object lessons in the way of the world. He winks, but there's something somber there. Everyone has their lessons to learn in this life. Best that your teachers are kind men, I always say. What, who have you fought for? Who? Over the years, I've fought for a number of different causes. My first fight was alongside the rugged kettlemen of the plowshares, trying to keep the slave families of the Sigis Protectorates from getting their hands on the bird folks' grazing lands. He shrugs, but I've been all over the map and off the edges too, having good times and bad, went with the Ailu rebels, the White Company, even fought in the endless battle for a while, until I figured my, out my commander was lying to me, walked away with a, from a hefty purse on that one I'll tell you, but it was the right thing to do, and the safest, and the sanest. Should have left even earlier, pay or no pay. Can you tell me about the endless battle? Of course I can, he says, but for a moment it seems he won't. His mouth works, but no words come out. It was more a nightmare than a war, he says at last. We marched out on one morning to take a certain hill, and we took it. He winces, then a shivery little ribble across the battlefield, and we were back on the march, and for the same field. Only this time, the other side routed us. I lost us this arm. So I lost this arm. He shows it to you, smooth and unmarked. You'd think our commander would have given us the rest of the war off, but no. She kept making us fight until the waves of time died down, and we took that damned hill and held it. I, I'm certain I died a few times myself, but I'm still here, whole and handsome as ever. What's the point? The fight in itself was pointless. All those lads and lasses dying for a cause centuries old. Now, I know I just described any war, but we know that certain people make a tidy profit on bloodshed on a, from bloodshed on a grand scale. And the endless battle, well, it's endless, and that makes it endlessly profitable. I have other questions. Ask away, lass. Tell me... I want to hear a story from your past. You do? He's, he says, taken aback, but he recovers quickly. Of course you do. Which part? Tell me about your first battle. Heh, I nearly missed. As, a, as I said, my sergeant knocked me out, stripped me naked, and hit the road with his friends and all the best weapons and armor in a stolen wagon. He clucks his tongue fondly. I woke up with a throbbing head of blood in my eyes to the new sergeant screaming at better throw on a sack and grab a stick because the protector was coming. Can't remember much about the battle itself. Lots of screaming and most of it mine. I remember hitting a number of heads with that stick, and I lost a sack at some point. No one seemed prepared to comment what with all the dying. At any rate, the protector kicked our teeth in and drove us back to a little herd down at the far eastern end of the plowshares. He winces at the memory. Well, the herd folk there, they were doing all they could for us. Feeding us, binding our wounds, because, well, we'd been defending their town, hadn't we? Trying to at any rate. 
but they don't know that the Protector Doss has stolen all their anine for provisions, the whole herd, and was heading south with them. Come, when are those pokes were going to starve to death? How the herd got stolen is a different tale. Villains on all sides we were. My commander wasn't going to tell him, but I couldn't stand it. We were meant to be saving these, the saving of these people, and we were robbing them just as surely as the protectorate had. So that night, the new sergeant and I borrowed two rasters and a sonic punch and flew south till we found the stolen anine. We screamed at the herd until they bolted and chased them all the way back north. What a young hero I was. What a fool. We nearly got knocked out of the sky a dozen times by their fire throwers, but we were sure that once we got the anine away, they wouldn't turn back for them. We, they knew we were being reinforced next morning, you see. Oh, we got demoted for that stunt. We both got a week in the brig beside, but those herd folk were damn grateful. Some of them several times. He winks. Hmm. Who's Alvy? Huh? Oh, let his name snip, did I? Slip, did I? Alvagin was the old sergeant I mentioned. First we were partners, then more than that, by a long shot. But well, you know things. They change. Heh, I haven't thought about the man in years. And now, ah, uh, that was why I hadn't thought of him. Too hard. You can't help but noticing his hands hooked to his belt are trembling. Uh, how about one of the good times you mentioned? Oh, I've had plenty. He says, running his teeth over his lip. More good times than bad, even as a gallow glass. But of course, there is one that stands out. But he's isn't smiling now, despite his words. My partner at the time, my old sergeant, and I heard a scrap ruin on the border between two mercenary armies over territory. We got there and knew it was going to be a bloodbath the moment someone went for a weapon. They'd been rivals for too long, see? It's a sad, sad thing to see professional killers turn violent. Now I was thinking we should get back on the road and as far as from the fight as possible, but my partner, he was a tinkerer. A soft gleam rises in his eyes. He had these two rings he was messing with at the time, claimed they could link mines. He wanted to plant one on each side, you know, get him seeing things from the other's point of view. Couldn't talk him out of it. He snuck around in the dark of the night, cursing and thumping and setting up the damn things in rival camps and back to a distant hill to watch. And all night long we heard strange things. Sorts of wet sounds, you know? Laughter, happy sighing. Then, then dawn came and there was a different kind of war going on in the mud below. The kind where everyone wins. Turns out once they got a taste of each other's thoughts, they found out they didn't want to fight each other after all. Not exactly. That was our before you always bringing out the truth in people. Better man than I deserve, certainly. And tell us about some of your merc work. Too many stories and that's uh, to tell in a single sitting, but I'll t stick to the one with the least amount of back alley murders. It's too lovely a day for grim tales of bloodshed. He squints at the air. I was j it was just after I'd left the military life. I was desperate to make a name for myself as a merc. Too desperate as it turned out. I was drinking in my favorite bar, and I felt a soft touch on my shoulder. It was a lady, a Navarine nobility, she said, in need of a bodyguard. Ugh, he covers his eyes. And that body, those eyes, I accepted on the spot, of course. She tried telling me why she needed me, something about assassins at a ball, but I was too busy watching her ships, her hips shift beneath that dress. I followed her around that ball with barely a thought in my head. Then... Halfway through the party, she comes back in different clothes. He chuckles, there's no humor in it. She tells me to tell anyone who asks that I'm her husband, Baron Giusk of Neverine, and that we have to leave immediately. We worked our way towards the door, but were stopped by the host of the ball and a phalanx of city guards. And they demanded to know who I was. Terrified, but right on cue, I say, I am the Baron Giusk of Gavrilene, and this is my knife. Thirty days in the blocks is an accessory. Turns out she'd stolen a fortune in living gems from an upstairs bedroom. She wasn't any kind of noble, just a common, beautiful thief. And the next time I saw her, she was dead. Life isn't fair on anyone. That's the truth. Uh, okay. Let's talk about something else. And something else. What? How are you holding up? I'm fine, Lance. I just, yeah, we already did that. Had some questions about the people we're traveling with. Gossiping and backbiting, is it? I'm always game for that. Who do you want to talk about? Uh, Um, we do not have Um. Um wasn't in the game when we... Okay. Alligator. He's so serious, isn't he? There's no point in frowning all the time. Life's hard enough. 
I smile, you might give it some thought why you personally never see me doing it. If I ever get around to thinking about you, I'll let you know. Oom, we do not have Oom in the party. We never picked up Oom. Charming little thing, I think, and beautiful in his own way. Rin. Ooh, I've been meaning to talk to you about this. What a foolish notion. What foolish notion made you think it was all right to bring a little girl with us? People say I'm irresponsible, but this... Hey, I may be a little, but at least I'm not a, a criminal. Was that an insult? I hear it all the time. Words lost at stake. I have additional questions, if you don't mind. I think it's best we part. Pardon, please. Damn sorry to hear it. It's been a pleasure. Are you sure now? I can't say I'll be staying around here if you change your mind. Well, you might not be able to, is what I'm saying. Never mind. Oh, uh, sorry. I got a way to contact you if I need you. Farewell. See you soon, baby. Okay, so, uh, we'll grab Matt Keener again. This seems to be a good day for talking to people. Hey, Elegant, I want you to pop off for a moment. I've got a way to contact you. I'm just going to grab Calistige, and you're going to be shitty about it if I do. So, uh, let's do this. Can I use it from here? Nah. Okay, inventory. Use item. Calistage, join us. This should be useful. Press My the button effect. with the dagger on it? Matt Keener, yes. You stab the button with a finger and hear someone growling in the under their breath in your head. Matt Keener, I need your help. Oh what? Oh it's you. Why not? Okay. Fantastic. Now, let's go get Calistage upgraded at Lady Anchi. Uh, let's talk about them upgrades. Calistage. My equipment is perfect the way it is, she says, arching an eyebrow. Of course it is, but there's perfection and tailored perfection. I can think of a number, a small, a number of small understated touches I can make to your gown. Love wouldn't cost more than 65 shins. Let's do it. Of course, she says, lifting her hand, fingers dancing. Ribbons of light slip between them. Calisage extends her arm with a long-suffering sigh, but favors you with a smile. I usually do my own dear work, dear. She says, drawing in the breast of the seam tightens, but this is a welcome treat. So then, better armor, and more evasion and willpower. Yep, sure. Well, that's it. You've bought all my upgrades. Thank you for your business. Alright, I have to go. Take care. So, Calistage, we'll chat with you and then we'll get rid of you. How are you holding up? When two great minds complement each other, there's nothing that can't be accomplished. So it is with you and I. I want to talk to you again, about you again. All of these things are there. There's nothing that's come up. Yeah, I think we really missed our chance with her. So, anyway. Hey, Calistage. Uh, I, we need to part ways. <sighs> well then, farewell. For now. I got a way to contact you. Gone long. And we'll do that. We'll grab Alagurn back. And then I think we'll chat with Rin and see if we can do anything with her. And then it will finally be time to actually go through Miela Vest. Ready to test this out. All right. Until next time, have a great day. Bye. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you spending the time and effort watching the videos I make. Uh, if you'd like to watch more, on the left there should be another video from this playlist. On the right there will be whatever YouTube recommends. And in the center there is a convenient subscribe button just in case you need it.